Good afternoon. Today's class, we're going to discuss Chapter 7, uh, Foreign Currency Transactions Between Companies. We're going to specifically look at foreign exchange rates, accounting for foreign currency transactions, and hedging foreign exchange risk. So Learning Objective 7-1 is entitled Understand Concepts Related to the Foreign Currency, Exchange Rates, and Foreign Exchange Risk. So each country or group of countries uses its own currency as a unit of value for the purchase and sale of goods and services. Between 1945 and 1973, countries fixed the par value of their currency in terms of the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar was based on the gold standard until 1971. Since 1973, exchange rates have been allowed to float in value. Several currency arrangements exist. And so this is the exchange rate mechanisms. Different currency mechanisms, independent float. The currency is allowed to fluctuate according to market forces. Pegged to another currency means the currency's value is fixed in terms of a particular foreign currency. And the central bank intervenes to maintain the fixed value. And European monetary system is a, co is a common currency. The euro is used in multiple countries and, it and its value floats against other world currencies. Foreign exchange rates. An exchange rate is the, is the cost of one currency in terms of another. Rates published daily in the Wall Street Journal are as of 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the day prior to the publication. Rates are also available at the websites, uh, the following websites listed here. So the, the published rates are wholesale rates that banks use with each other and retail rates that customers are higher. And so the difference between the rates at which a bank is willing to buy and sell currency is known as the spread. So foreign, foreign currency trades, foreign currency trades can be expected, can be executed on a spot or forward basis. The spot is the price at which a foreign currency can be purchased or sold today. The forward rate is the price available today at which a foreign currency will be purchased or sold in the future. So many international business transactions take some time to be completed. So the ability to lock in a price today at, a, at which a foreign currency can be purchased or so, sold at, at some future date has definite advantages. So foreign currency quotes. Information is reported for each day's exchange rate as direct quotes or indirect quotes. So a direct quote indicates the number of domestic currency needed to purchase one unit of foreign currency. And the indirect quotes in, indicate the number of foreign currency units that could be purchased with one unit of domestic currency. These rates are simply the inverse of direct quotes. Forward rates. Forward rates can fluctuate. If forward rates exceed spot rates on any given date, the foreign currency is said to be selling at a premium in the forward market. If the forward rates are less than the spot rates, the currency is said to be selling at a discount. Currency sell at a premium or a discount because of the differences in interest rates between two countries. Foreign exchange and option contracts. Foreign, foreign currency options give the holder of an option the right but not the obligation to trade foreign currency in the future. So terms are put, call, strike price. And so a put is a op options allow for the sale of a foreign currency by the option holder. A call is options allow for the purchase of foreign currency by the option holder. A strike price is the exchange rate at which options will be ex executed and options holder decide to exercise the options, if the option holder decides to exercise the options. Options purchased in the over-the-counter OTC market usually have a strike price equal to the spot rate on that date. These options are said to be at the money. So option values. Options are purchased by paying an, an optimum premium, a function of two components, intrinsic value and time value. Intrinsic value is equal to the gain that could be realized by exercising the option immediately. An option with a positive intrinsic value is said to be in the money. Time value relates to the spot rate, which can change over time and cause the option's intrinsic value to increase. Time value of an option decreases over time because less time remains for the option to increase in its intrinsic value. The fair value of a foreign currency option on a specific date is the sum of the intrinsic and the time value on the date. So 7-2, um, 
were basic key terms and concepts that um, we need to go over and that you need to know uh, in dealing with foreign currency. So learning objective seven dash two account for foreign foreign currency transactions using the two transaction perspective accrual approach. And here we discuss the types of foreign transactions and their ex business exposures. So foreign currency transactions, export sales and import purchases are international transactions and they are components of what, what is called a trade. The companies involved must decide which currency will be settled, used to settle the transaction and whether the transaction will be denominated. Um, payment will be made in domestic or foreign currency. If a company receives foreign currency to settle the transaction, it must restate the amount of foreign currency received into domestic currency. So transaction exposure. Assume an American company enters into a transaction that allows its foreign customer 30 days to pay for its purchases. The American company runs the risk that the value of the foreign currency and domestic currency might change between the sale date and the date of payment. The sale could generate less or more domestic currency that it would have would have had at the date of sale. If so, the American company has an exposure to foreign exchange risk. So export sale. So an export sale. Exposure exists when an exporter allows a business to pay in a foreign currency after the sale has been made. The exporter is exposed to the risk that the foreign currency might depreciate between the sale and the payment dates. No foreign exchange risk exposure exists if the exporter requires payment on the date of sale. The foreign currency received would be immediately converted into domestic currency at the spot rate on the date of sale. So import purchase. So exposure exists when the importer is required to pay in foreign currency sometime after the, after the purchase. The importer is exposed to the risk that the foreign currency might appreciate between purchase and payment dates, increasing the domestic currency paid. So no foreign exchange risk exposure exists if the importer makes a payment on the date of purchase. The domestic currency paid will be immediately converted into foreign currency at the spot rate on the date of purchase. So here you see that these transactions, the whole purpose of, of discussing this is because of the fluctuation. If, if they're buying something and they're paying for it later, whether it's an import purchase or export sale. So accounting for foreign currency transactions. A major issue in accounting for foreign currency transaction is how to account for the change in domestic currency value of the sales revenue and accounts receivable resulting from the export when the foreign currency changes in value and the change in domestic currency value of the accounts payable in goods being acquired in the import purchase. So FASB ASC 830-20, Foreign Currency Matters. Foreign currency transactions requires the two transaction perspective and treats the sale and collection of cash as two separate transactions. So number one, account for the original sale in US dollars at the date of sale. No subsequent adjustments are made. And then number two, change in the US dollar value of the foreign currency are accounted for as gains and losses from exchange rate fluctuations reported separately from sales in the income statement. And so you're gonna do some examples in chapter seven um, how you calculate this. Import purchases uh, denominated in a foreign currency and the subsequent cash payment must be accounted for separately. So the same process, the US dollar value of the goods are purchased is recorded at the date of purchase with no sub subsequent adjustments to the accounts, to the cost of goods. Any difference between the number of US dollars that could have been paid on the purchase date and the actual number of US dollars paid on the payment date due to a change in exchange rate is treated as a foreign exchange gain or loss again. So here you have a summary of exchange rates and foreign exchange gains and losses. So the summary of the relationship between fluctuations in exchange rates and foreign exchange gains and losses. So on the table here you have transactions, the type of exposure, and then for foreign currency whether it's going to, if it appreciates or, or depreciates. And so export sales is a type of exposure is an asset and import purchase is a liability. If the foreign currency appreciates, you have a gain on the asset. If it appreciates, you have a loss on a liability. And the, the opposite for if it depreciates for an asset, you have a loss. And if it depreciates on a liability, there's a gain. 
So foreign currency receivables from an export sale create an asset exposure to foreign exchange risk. And foreign currency payables from an import purchase create a liability exposure to foreign exchange risk. So balance sheet date before date of payment. So authoritative accounting literature requires foreign currency balances, foreign currency receivables, or foreign currency payables to be revalued at the balance sheet date to account for the change in exchange rates. Consistent with accrual accounting under the two transaction, transaction perspective, a foreign exchange gain or loss arises at the balance sheet date. U.S. GAAP requires the accrual accounting approach to be used to account for foreign exchange rate, exchange, rate exchanges. Accounting for unrealized gain and losses. So the accrual approach required by U.S. GAAP, unrealized foreign exchange and losses are reported in the net income in the period in which the exchange rate changes. Change in exchange rate from the balance sheet date to the date of payment results in a second foreign exchange gain or loss that is reported in the second accounting period. So IFRS, International Financial Accounting Standards, uh, similar to U.S. GAAP, the effects of changes in foreign exchange rates requires the use of two transaction perspective. Uh, there are no substantive, substantive uh, differences between U.S. GAAP and IFRS in accounting for foreign currency transactions. Learning Objective 7-3, Accounting for Foreign Currency Borrowings. So companies often must account for foreign currency borrowings and other type of foreign currency transactions. Companies borrow foreign currency from foreign lenders to finance foreign operations or to take advantage of more favorable interest rates. The principal and interest are denominated in the foreign currency and create an exposure to foreign exchange risk, which complicate accounting for a foreign currency borrowing. Foreign currency loans. So companies lend foreign currency to related parties, creating the, the opposite situation from a foreign currency borrowing. The companies must keep track of the note receivable and interest receivable, both of which are denominated in the foreign currency. Fluctuations in the U.S. dollar value and the principal and interest generally give rise to foreign exchange gains and losses that would be included in income. So here they're explaining that if it's a borrowing or a loan, you still have exposure, foreign, foreign exchange exposure risk. Money Objective 7-4, understand the different types of foreign exchange risk that can be hedged and how foreign currency forward contracts and foreign currency options can be used to hedge those risks. So hedging foreign exchange risks. To avoid uncertainty of unfavorable changes in the value of foreign currency and foreign transactions, companies often use derivative financial information to, to hedge against the effect of unfavorable changes in the value of foreign currencies. A derivative, a financial instrument, or a, simply a, a derivative, derives its value from some underlying in this case, the underlying is the current exchange rate. So the two most common derivatives used to hedge foreign exchange risk are foreign currency forward contracts and foreign currency options. So hedge a recognized foreign currency denominated asset. So foreign currency forward contracts lock in the price for which the currency will sell at the contract's maturity. Foreign currency options establish a price for the currency can be sold, but is not required to be sold at maturity. If a company enters into a forward contract or purchases a put option on the date the sale is made, the derivative is used as a hedge of a recognized foreign currency denominated asset. So accounting for foreign currency firm commitments. Companies engage in foreign currency activities often enter into hedging arrangements as soon as they receive a non-cancelable sales order or place a non-cancelable purchase order. A non-cancelable order that specifies that foreign currency price and date of delivery is known as a foreign currency firm commitment. Hedge of a forecasted foreign currency denominated transa transaction example. So assume American, American company Americo accepts an order to sell parts to a customer in South Korea at a price of 5 million Korean won. The parts will be delivered and payment will be received on August 15th. On June 1st, before the sale has been made, Americo enters into a forward contract to sell 5 million Korean won on August 15th. In this case, Americo is using a foreign currency derivative as a hedge of an unrecognized foreign currency firm commitment. 
hedge of an unrecognized foreign currency commitment can continue. So some companies have foreign currency transactions that occur on a regular basis and can be reliably forecasted. For example, Americo regularly purchases materials from a supplier in Hong Kong for which it pays in Hong Kong dollars. Even if Americo has no contract to make future purchases, it has an exposure to foreign currency risk if it plans to continue making purchases from the Hong Kong supplier. Assume on October 1st, Americo forecasts that it will make a purchase from the Hong Kong supplier in one month. To hedge against the possible increase in the price of the Hong Kong dollar, Americo acquires a call option on August 1st to purchase Hong Kong dollars in one month. The foreign currency option represents a hedge of a forecasted foreign currency denominated transaction. So under with a hedge, these transactions that they're explaining um, are to limit the exposure, your foreign currency, currency exposure risk. So please read chapter seven. Thank you.